Head and neck, unknown primary site, usually presents with painless upper neck adenopathy. In terms of the most re uh, or common regions where this occurs, it's usually a primary from the tonsil, followed by base of tongue, followed by piriform sinus. Differential diagnosis include congenital abnormality like a branchial cleft cyst versus a neoplasm, squamous cell from head or neck or skin, adenocarcinoma, lymphoma, thyroid carcinoma, melanoma, salivary gland cancer, or a sarcoma. Workup, H&P including comprehensive skin exam and an assessment of smoking history. You want a CBC, a CMP, LFTs, get an FNA of the involved neck node, and a CT or an MRI of the neck. Consider a PET-CT if other studies are non-diagnostic. You want to do the PET-CT prior to the EUA and mucosal biopsies because the biopsy can alter the results of the subsequent PET-CT. HPV and EBV testing for squamous cell cancer. HPV is staged according to oropharynx. EBV is staged according to nasopharynx. Also obtain thyroglobulin and calcitonin levels for an adenocarcinoma. Do an EUA and a panendoscopy, i.e. examine the oral cavity, the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and do an esophagoscopy or an EGD. With direct biopsies in areas of clinical concern, you could consider doing blind biopsies if there are no concerning areas on scope, which should include the nasopharynx, the base of tongue, and the piriform sinus. Likewise, a palatine tonsillectomy plus or minus a lingual tonsillectomy, unilateral palatine tonsils. Some recommend bilateral palatine tonsils, but Galloway article just says unilateral. A patient with P16 disease are much more likely to have primary identified on the EUA and the biopsy. For level 4 neck nodes, consider non-head neck primary and do a CT, chest, abdomen, pelvis, and triple endoscopy. Staging is T0 if no primary is found. If a primary tumor is found, as it is in most cases, and staging um, should be done according to that site. Management general approach per NCCN is surgery with uh, postoperative radiation or postoperative chemo radiation. The alternative approach is primary radiation or chemo radiation. Postoperative radiation indications are N2 or N3 disease. Postop chemo radiation indications are extranodal extension. You can consider primary chemo radiation instead of radiation alone for anything more than N2. The Galloway article has a more nuanced approach. N1 is considered one node less than three centimeters. You do surgery or radiation alone. N2A is one node between three and six centimeters. Favorable tumors in this case are P16 positive in a non-smoker and no clinical ENE. You do surgery or primary radiation alone. Unfavorable N2A is a P16 negative tumor or P16 positive with a smoking history. You perform surgery followed by radiation. Very unfavorable would be clinical evidence of external extension. You do chemo radiation in this case as surgery would require adjuvant chemo radiation anyway. Again, that's all N2A, meaning one node three to six centimeters. N2B is going to be multiple ipsilateral nodes, all of which are less than three centimeters. Surgery plus radiation or primary chemo radiation. Uh, you favor the latter if there's clinical evidence of extranodal extension. N2C will be bilateral adenopathy for which you're going to do chemo radiation. N3 is any node greater than six centimeters. Chemo radiation, since many of these size nodes harbor ENE. You could also do surgery with adjuvant, but this is less favored in the scenario. If, if thyroglobulin is negative, calcitonin negative, adenocarcinoma of lymph nodes levels 1b to 3, um, ipsilateral parotidectomy and neck dissection, followed by postoperative radiation. Again, the evidence for this is the Fox Chase Galloway article from JCO 2015. For the Galloway article, bilateral neck and mucosal treatment is the current standard for definitive and adjuvant. URTC 22205 randomized trial of unilateral versus bilateral radiation closed early with no results. Galloway mucosal targets, P patients not of Asian descent with P16 positive and an EBV negative neck, you could consider not targeting the nasopharynx. If they are P16 positive, a non-smoker, and nose limited to levels 2 or predominance in 2 with small volume level 3, you can consider omitting supraglottic larynx and the hypopharynx, i.e. just treat the nasopharynx and oropharynx. If they're P16 negative or level 3 nodes or heavy smoker, then include the larynx and hypopharynx. Oral cavity is not included unless levels 1A or B nodes are present. Technique and planning, definitive IMRT dose painting. Definitive dosing is 
70 grain, 35 fractions for the gross disease. High risk positive neck, 63 in 1.8 gray per fraction for HPV negative or 59.5 at 1.7 gray per fraction for HPV positive. The low risk is including the contralateral neck and second echelon nodes in mucosa. This is treated 56 at 1.6 gray per fraction. CTV 70 is gross lymph nodes plus 5 millimeters. CTV high risk is the involved neck, levels 2 through 4. CTV low risk is the mucosal axis, the low risk second echelon nose and contralateral neck, levels 2 through 4, retropharyngeal. Post-op dosing is in 30 fractions. Extra capsular extension is 63 to 2.1. High risk is the involved neck, levels 2 through 4, 60 gray, 2 gray per fraction. Low risk is the contralateral neck, levels 2 through 4 in retropharyngeal nodes, second echelon nodes in the ipsilateral neck and the mucosa, 54 gray and 1.8 gray per fraction. When treating the nasopharynx, it is literally just the anatomic borders of the nasopharynx, from the nasal cone to the clivus, the bottom of the sphenoid sinus to the soft palate. When treating the oropharynx, it is from the soft palate to the vollecula, including the base of tongue and the tonsils and the posterior pharyngeal wall. Toxicity and follow-up, definitive radiation is a five-year overall survival of 50% and a five-year local control of 80 to 90%. After radiation, mucosal emergence, ipsilateral neck failure, or contralateral neck failure are all 10% or less.